Hello creative people and welcome back to another video review. My name is Mina Shamali and uh, today I'm having a look at Dream Audio Tools Indie Fingers Volumes 1 and 2. Um, to start off, I'll, I'll show you a track I wrote with Indie Fingers, uh, with both libraries, and then we can dive in and start talking about uh, the libraries themselves and, you know, the kind of things you can do with them. Uh, I'll have a, I'll refer to the track as well as to some things that can be done. Uh, I didn't explore every possibility, but because that would otherwise just be extremely messy. But uh, here it goes. Here's the track. So there you have it. That's my track. Uh, it's called Waiting for My Life to Begin. I don't know. It just seemed appropriate. Appropriate. I can't speak. Why am I doing video reviews? Um, so first things first. What is this library? Um, or what are these two libraries, which are two versions of similar things? Uh, two volumes of similar things, I should say. So they're guitar phrase libraries for contact uh they require the full version of contact at least 4.2.3 if i'm correct uh as far as the website states and um i'm just gonna have a quick check of the the uh prices as well but what they are um is they are guitar phrase libraries um like little licks, little phrases. Um, 
so for the most part, you won't find any single multi-sample instruments in here. Uh, what you'll find is all these little rhythmic and sometimes melodic riffs, uh, which can be used to different effects. Um, so in the fingers volume one, just looking up on a website, costs you 19, 1990 euro 1990 uh, and I imagine volume two to cost something similar 2990 so volume one costs 19 euros 90 I don't even know what, what the little unit for euro is I don't live in Europe so it's never really been a necessity to know. So it's 1990 euros to for uh, volume one and 2990 euros for volume two. Um, I will be frank here and say uh, I have gotten an NFR copy uh, to do this review uh, because I know some people take issue if you don't declare that. So here's a declaration. So, you know, take that into consideration while you uh, listen to me do my review, <laughs> uh, if it makes a difference to you. Um, I'll try, I'm trying to be as honest about this as possible. Um, so, uh, dive straight into it. I'll, I've organized um, all the patches here. So, like, I didn't actually use all these patches in the, in the track, but I opened them up so I can then demonstrate them as well. Um, and I've just organized them in a in a way that made sense to me uh, per contact, contact instance. Um, and let me just bypass all my effects. And that's not happening. Okay, so all the effects are bypassed, so you'll be listening to this as raw as possible. Um, so intervallic arpeggios from Indie Fingers Volume 1. So we're going to start with Volume 1. Um, you have these kind of things. So all these things in fifths and inversions. In I suppose you could play them together. Because uh, <laughs> you're getting, it's kind of an interesting way to do it. Um, something uh, so different different uh, this one's an octaves before they're in fifth So some pretty interesting things, and the cool thing is you can you can alternate between them, you can combine them in different ways, um, like you heard me do in the first instance. Um, so yeah, now I look at a library like this, and I consider it a sort of a a spice library or a sauce library if you're using cooking as a metaphor um this is where you're putting the flavors this is where you're putting you're adding things you still got the meat and the potatoes and the broccoli or whatever it is that you want to eat um, which is your main kind of thing but then you add your little herbs your little spices your little uh sauces and that's what gives it the different flavor and this these kinds of licks you can pretty much serve up flavor to a lot of different types of tracks. 
uh, like this track that you just heard probably can work as a pop track if I bothered to write lyrics for it. Um, and could also work if you do these, this nice string arrangements and support it with the guitars. It's very supportive. It's not overbearing, you know? Um, so yeah, so next we got double stops. Uh, now, it's a, this is a guitar and a, and a string term. Uh, double stop is basically when you play two strings at once. Um, and especially it's uh, on violins, for example, you'll, uh, you bow two strings at once. But on a guitar, you're playing two strings at once, which sounds kind of like this. So we've got these kinds of things. So these are all kind of major. Um, and these are in fifths. Fifths, but also in a different way. And these are kind of major, um, major third. That's what I mean. So you know some interesting things you can do there, um, and obviously these. Um, I'll just open this up, and you can see here. It uses contact beat machine, which is um, how they sync. Uh, they sync up to the. Um, I'm showing you the inner workings. So this is how they sync up to your tempo. Uh, for your project in your DAW in Cubase. I'm here on 114. Um, and yeah. So that's your double stops, which can be useful for some things because um, I think, especially in kind of pop rock, um, these things would work. Um, and yeah, this is the kind of thing that works if you don't have a guitarist uh, or don't play the guitar yourself. So we've got some repetitions here, which are these, these are actually probably my favorite patches. Um, two different kinds of repetitions. You've got bass repetitions and full repetitions. Uh, your bass repetitions sound like this. So these are just your lower uh, guitar notes and your full repetitions go right up. So they include those here. So that's what you heard, obviously, in the beginning of the track. That was the uh, that intro. Um, and you heard one of the intervals, um, interval arpeggios, doing the melody set. Something to that effect. Um, it's cool because you can, like, these are prominent enough to kind of play melodies. Uh, went off the range there, but you know what I mean. Um, what else we got? What else we got? So we got repetitions and these I put up, uh, if you can hear it, it's coming out of the right speaker. Because I did this interesting thing. Um, now these don't have the effects on them, so all you hear is um, just what they sound like on their own. <laughs> so if you hear that, I kind of offset one of them by 16 to kind of give it that effect of da 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 or something like that. And you combine that with the other repetitions. And together they kind of work really well. Um, 
So these are probably the most versatile, well, some of the most versatile because these are very ubiquitous and you'll hear them in a lot of kinds of music. So it's, it's very, very good to have. Um, we got arpeggios. Um, so these are cool in, in volume one. Uh, you got a key switch, so you got major, minor, or diminished. So your first key switch is major. Uh, second key switch is minor. And third is diminished. And you know, if you wanted to combine them to make these seventh chords with the diminished and the major and the minor, um, that is all possible. Um, I didn't make use of it in this track, but uh, this is definitely something that is worth having. Naturally played guitar riffs. You know? So it gets pretty heavy. You got one shot arps, so it's that but not looped. Same with the end. So it's just major and minor. Um, I'll have to actually click it here so you can see the effects. So you can do these kind of things um, and combine them. You see, you can always combine all these different parts together if, if need be. Um, then you got fingered chords, which are just... Um, it's just like, you know, a nice slow string. So these work pretty well. Um, so you know spices. That's 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 my that's my th thesis of my point today. Uh, these are some beautiful spices and some necessary spices. You know, uh, I find that if I if I needed that kind of a drive that wasn't overbearing, these things will come in handy. Um, and having these chords as well to kind of they can outline. Something like this it can sort of outline the beginning of a f of a bar um, while you got the other stuff driving. Uh, so you can have something combine it with repetitions. You know, but you you can do it to, to on it separately. So so it's the combinations are pretty cool. Um, I've got these mid low arpeggios now. Um, Indie Fingers Volume One uh, is the bridge, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, these are played on a guitar in the bridge position, um, which is closer to, to, you know, where you plug in the amp. It's very hard, the head of the guitar, as opposed to volume two, which is more towards the neck. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. But you get these mid low arpeggios, and they sound like this. Um, similar to what we had before.
So you offset it and you can do these kinds of interesting rhythms. Um, <laughs> this could be hilarious. They could be pretty cool. They could also be hilarious. Uh, could make this kind of a cheesy 80s thing. With this kind of thing. And if you reverse that sample, dun, dun, da, da. I don't know, you could start doing beat it. Oh, yes. So, so my timing is all off today. Uh, and these are cool because, um, it's what it's doing is it's doing a minor third. So let's do that automatically. And it can work with a variety of different chords. Let's so say you've got an E minor. Um, you'll have the da -da -da -da, or a C, a C major. It'll work with it. So you can always kind of use it to outline whatever chord you need it to outline, which is actually a trick I've used here, but in, in volume two. But I'll show you. That. And you can combine these as well, so this has a major version as well. So that's uh, fourths. And this is a major sixth up. So yeah, the, because these are straightforward rhythms most of the time, you can really get creative with how you put them together. Um, and some people scoff at loops and scoff at phrases and like, you know, uh, you know, they say it's not real composition to do that. Well, no, it actually is. Um, I mean, this whole thing, it had my own chord progression, my own, um, my own sense of it, this whole track, my own sense of composition. Um, like I'll just, here's this is the piano that I use. Um, you know, uh, in the the B section, you heard this kind of music. did was use the phrases and and the loops to kind of help what I wrote so I wrote this kind of a little theme and based it on this chord progression um, and these phrases really added a spice of authenticity um, and just to close off volume one and what it has to offer uh, there are some add like add-ons um, I'll just open up what it says here. So it's like under volume one. So thanks add on. So these are like bonus patches, um, which I assume uh, Luca from Dream Audio Tools, I think he's the main guy who designs these. Uh, I don't know if there's another person in there or another team, but I know that Luca's heavily involved. Uh, uh, these, these bonus patches uh, have these effects. Uh, that are making full use of contact uh, and its effect track. And that's that's one of the things I admire about uh, the Dream Audio Tools guys, is they take contact as far as possible with what they do. Um, so you have something like this. I assume these are some of the same patches that you'd heard before, just heavily affected. So you can do a lot with these. Uh, 
And just going for now. Nice for your classic rock. <laughs> the classic rock version of Don't Stop Believing. Oh, whatever. You know what I mean. Uh, I like to have fun. Uh, we got One Shot Pulsar, which I think is. It's just the arpeggios, but. They're going through some cool effects. Uh, this cabin is a bit of a delay, a bit of a reverb. Um, so, you know, you can possibly create a lot more of your own with these patches. Uh, so this is one of the patches, Ordinary Mood, that I used in the, in the track. Um, and just to show you one of those things that you can do, is so you know there's uh, a lot that can be done um more more effective things so and more arpeggios oh, this is a track i used in the actual uh sort of to, to support Oof. I hit the mic. There we go. Uh, to support the melody up there. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's some pretty cool stuff. Uh, now, I'll just open up uh, Indie Fingers Volume 2. Uh, so, I've divided it here into some guitar some bass uh, sequences, uh, which, you know, it's not actual bass, it's just the bass strings of the guitar, or the first strings of the guitar. So it sounds like this. Well, when you go down there. So that's your first multi-sampled thing that you can do. Linearity. So these are then there you have sequences. So these are in fifths, so these are pretty versatile. So in your fingers too gets a little more specialized, so a little more specific phrases. And the thing is, you can't actually switch it to major or minor, which is the one bummer about this. I wish they would have recorded more and I had the option to switch to kind of use the same pattern in a uh, minor setting. But, you know, you can't have everything. So that's what's there. Uh, if need be, I think you can take it, if you have Melodyne, uh, which I don't, um, Melodyne DNA, you can... Uh, correct polyphonic stuff, which is like just basic single instrument parts. Uh, so 
you can do this. You can do stuff like that. So this is pretty cool. I apologize for my atrocious humming. Um, so, you know, these kinds of, uh, these kinds of tracks, these kinds of phrases can be very useful to support uh, a melody. And I'll show you the ones that I used from the library. I uh, used some of the more uh, trebly ones. These are the more bass, bass ones. Uh, you got some tremolos, which are pretty cool. Uh, so you got singles here, which is your multi-sampled tremolo. Some more sequences with with these tremolo. Where are we at? Tremolo one. Got tremolo two. So as you can tell, some of these will be a little harder to produce with traditional multi samples. So yeah, so these sound pretty natural and nice, and th that now you can see these are the more melodically um, shaped ideas. Uh, <laughs> now we got something cool: spaghetti chords, so spaghetti westerns, uh, and they're pretty much exactly what you think they are. Um, So you got a major down here. You got minor, you got like seventh. Um, so this is pretty cool. Like again, it's providing you with these little licks that are naturally recorded, and you may not get otherwise without actually getting a real guitarist. Who knows what they're doing? Um, and you get some slides as well. Uh, I'm just figuring out what the keys are. Um, I think they're major thirds. Um, so these slides are pretty cool, uh, can find their place. Uh, and again, these, these don't have to be extremely prominent, they can just be little effects. Uh, so I've got a couple of uh, things here, and this is one I used actually. Um, you can take advantage of that and make it sound like this.
So we can do some pretty cool, uh, some pretty cool stuff with it. Uh, dead zone. So yeah, <laughs> it's a little dead, <laughs> but it sounds it sounds good. It's nice and subdued. Um, some more sequences here. Now again, I didn't use all of those, but the ones that I did use, I'm showing you as I go. Um, and as I said, I'd group them as according to what I thought were similar things, similar in terms of sound and how and sort of. They felt like they belong, they belong together. See something like this. Isn't it? My singing is atrocious today. Um, when these things are in fourths and fifths and seconds, they're easy to kind of adapt to any arrangement. Da da. So da. Root fourth fifth. Root fourth or second note. You know. These work with a lot of chord progressions, and you, know, you could do stuff like this and just combine it in different ways. Um, you got hurry, so this can be nice and driving. And this is one more thing I wanted to say. Something like this will take really good, well to effects as well. Um, now I, you heard me put a few effects onto the track. Uh, which, if the samples themselves weren't good, they wouldn't take so well to the effects. Uh, and that's something I think that uh, defines a good library, how well it takes to effects. Um, like when the samples themselves are good, you're listening to these samples raw. This is what they sound like out of the box. This is what they, what Luca from Dream Audio Tools has provided you with. <laughs> They're well recorded, they sound good. And you know, you put, I'll say for example, I'll put this, uh, put some re some reverb, no, not reverb, uh, some distortion onto this. Actually, what am I doing? Um, these things have distortion here. They're in the front panel. So you can do a lot with this. Um, and then, you know, of course, you can EQ it as per the requirements of your track. Um, and finally, your octaves. So these are pretty useful as well. See, it's got all these little specialized things and these more general things, and all the phrases can be used in different combinations. Um, and this next section, I'll show you how I used some of them. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning, though, I'll just open up the um, the volume two, is that you get variations of each one with different types of effects applied. Uh, so something like hurry you can go variation one, and it'll sound like this. Uh, it's just, I think, some stuff behind uh, behind the scenes that's happening that you can use to do that. Uh, all right. So uh, this section, this is probably one that I used a lot of in this track. Uh, so first you start with trio, which sounds like this. Now, these are actually... That's maybe a criticism, but you figure it out pretty quickly. Um, this is actually an E. Um, it's not a C. It's not. It's meant to be an E, not a C. So uh, you just gotta rewire how you think about it. Um, you got this. So you know, little little licks. 
and you hear that coming out of the lift because I used that in the uh, in the track. This one as well. And as you can tell, this is this is in kind of a major third thing. Da na na na. It's not da na na na. Da na na na. I don't have the variation, but I could still use it, and I'll show you how in a minute. This. this actually reminds me of Inception. Uh, if you listen to Time, um, the uh, the track from Inception, the famous track from Inception, uh, the guitar the guitar bit goes like that in this uh, in part of it. Uh, now let's just have a look at this bit. So. We got these two working together. And you got this, these two working together. I know they kind of clash with each other, but it's part of what I wanted to do. I'll admit, I went a little... Sorry. Yeah, so they kind of clash with each other a little bit, but I kind of went a little crazy with this track. Um, but, you know, uh, and with this sequence as well, uh, this kind of helps the repetitions. So yeah, so I quite enjoyed uh, using those specifically. Uh, finally, I'll just show you these. So what do we have here? Uneasy rubber, rubber plant. These are in fifth, so they're easy to work with as well. So you can do a lot of different combinations with these. Uh, now the rest of it isn't actually isn't guitars anymore. There was one more, one more. I seem to have forgotten. There was a fuzzy stories. I completely skipped it. Ah, I completely skipped that. Uh, let's open up a new instance and just open it up as it is. Um, I just want to show you a bit of everything in this library because it's got a lot to work with. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I'm just realizing this now. So you got guitar, indie film, Fallen 2. As you can tell, there's also some half tempo ones, which if you think these ones are too fast or you would like him to have tempo. Every single one of these patches is available in full tempo and half tempo, which is fantastic. Um, so we had Fuzzy Story. There we go. Which wouldn't have worked with my track, but you know, you can do something like this. That's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> now I'm actually listening to this for the first time, surprisingly, because uh, I don't know how to do my job. <laughs> but these are pretty. These these would I could so see these. Ones. These would work really well in a more aggressive arrangement. Um, so yes, that's your fuzzy story. Um, so that's all the patches. Um, there wasn't anything else I did so specifically uh, with the track. Um, all in all, uh, as you've heard from the track, it was very useful. Uh, you could use it for mel melodic lines, even using some of the arpeggios. Uh, could use it for a lot of repeating patterns and you know driving patterns. And let me unbypass the effects and uh, I'll just play this bit again. So as you can tell, there's a lot that you can do, and um, I did not feel limited in any way by the fact that this is a phrase library. I still made melodies, I still made uh, some chords and some um, some little, you know, driving riffs and uh, little phrases to work with, and to me, it worked really damn well. Uh, and I could see myself using this in different arrangements in future projects uh, for a variety of different scenarios. You know, uh, sometimes you need the sauce, sometimes you need the spice. Uh, you need a little Italian spice, you get spaghetti western. It's right there, you got a spaghetti. <laughs> I mean, I'm not making this stuff up, guys. Spaghetti quartz. The library itself says it's a... It's a spice palette. It's a pasta thing. It's a flavor. Um, but, you know, the bulk of the track was made up from this. Uh, I just got some drums. And, by the way, none of the stuff I did here um, is using extravagant libraries. The drums um, are from Spitfire Labs, aka those uh, free in return for a donation to UNICEF. Uh, libraries to Spitfire, so just the drums from there, um, and drum loops from The Unfinished, aka Matt Badler, who is a brilliant sound designer. If you haven't gone to get his uh, his sound sets for Massive and Omnisphere, do so. Massive has never sounded better. And he'd released these, these drum loops off, uh, um, off his Facebook page. Um, which just sounded like this, if you wanted to hear it on its own. And that's on top of those um, drums. The strings that I'm using here are uh, the intimate strings from Embertone, which are free, the light. Um, and all the effects are the ones included in Cubase. I didn't use anything else. The bass is also from Dream Audio Tools, which is repetitive bass. It does its uh, job pretty damn well. And I'll be reviewing that soon as well. Um, and yeah, nothing else to say. That's the track, that's Dream Audio Tools in the Fingers Volumes 1 and 2. Uh, I hope this review has helped you if you're thinking about picking it up. Really, 
for twenty nine ninety and nineteen ninety euros, uh, for an, an incredible variety of stuff, which is very versatile and ubiquitous, and can be ubiquitous in your music. Um, I think it's great value, but I've what do I know? I've got an NFR copy, <laughs> um, but I could definitely be using this in future projects uh, for different effects and different two different effects. Uh, with that, I will leave you. Uh, I've taken off enough of your time. I hope you have fun, and I will be back soon with another video review. Uh, I'll be reviewing more of the Dream Audio Tools stuff as well. So, till then, have fun, be entertained, be musical, and I will see you guys in the next one.